Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Eun Soo Kang, one of the associate pastors here at Ricefield United Methodist Church. I want to welcome you to this worship service at the Vine, an online campus of Ricefield United Methodist Church. We are truly blessed to gather in the presence of the Lord, and we are grateful to have you with us. We pray that you will find a place of healing, belonging, and growing in our midst. Today marks the beginning of the exciting journey in our spiritual walk. We start on a new sermon series that will nourish our spirit and deepen our connection with God, focusing on the fruit of the Spirit. As we explore this series, we will discover the fruit that the Holy Spirit cultivates within us. So I want to invite you to open your heart and minds as we begin this new journey. Let us prepare to receive God's Word with eagerness, not only gaining a deeper understanding of the fruit of the Spirit, but also bearing the fruit in our daily lives. Now, let us prepare our hearts before God and feel closer to the Lord. Please join me now in our congregational prayer. The words will be shown on your screen. God, make us fertile soil. In this time of worship, till our heart so that we will grow your fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In our daily lives, keep us from striving, and instead, help us trust the work you are doing in us. We ask this in the name of our Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to get to lead us in prayer today. Will you join me now as we go before God in prayer? Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today in your name. We thank you for this time of worship where you are forming us and meeting us here. God, so often we think that love needs to be extraordinary, that love only happens in big, dramatic moments when much is on the line. But Jesus, you've given us a different example. When you walked the earth, you loved us in the time you spent with us, in the food you shared with us, in the teachings you gave us, in, the, in your presence with us when we wept. Help us to follow your example and make our whole lives reflections of your love. We pray for mothers and fathers as they nurture children 24 hours a day. We pray for teachers as they guide and form others. We pray for real estate agents as they help people find home. We pray for business leaders as they try to discern the right decisions to make. We pray for doctors and nurses as they are your healing hands in the world. And we pray for others in the thousands of different vocations you have called them to. God, wherever we find ourselves this week, in the minutia of our daily lives, let us be agents of love. Help us to see our actual normal lives as the place where you are transforming us for the transformation of the world. God, we know that one way we love others is by praying for them. And so God, now we pray for those whose needs are heavy on our spirits and we name them before you either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but you listen to our prayers and you respond to them. Trusting in your unfailing love, we ask all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now into a time of reflection and giving, I'd like to remind you that you can always give to the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church through our website, our smartphone app, and of course the mail. Let us now continue to worship God. everyone. This was a very exciting week at Wrightsville because we have restarted our preschool and I have the privilege of getting to be with our young preschoolers every single week to lead them in a chapel time. The goals of this chapel time is to help these kids become comfortable inside of our church and worship space and teach them stories from the Bible, and most importantly, the fact that God loves them more than they can even imagine. So today, I want to show you what we did at chapel time this week. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you today. My name's Pastor Julia. Today, we are in a really, really special kind of room. Do you know what this special room is called? It's called a sanctuary. Can you say that word? Sanctuary. That's a kind of funny word. A sanctuary is a special place that we go to spend time with God. God is everywhere, and so we can always be with God, but sometimes it helps us to have a special place that's just for spending time with God. 
My name is Pastor Julia, and I have a special role when I'm here at the church. I'm a pastor, which means that it's my job to help to teach you all about God and how much God loves you. It helps sometimes for me, because I have a special job, to have a special outfit that I wear. So when I'm doing this, I wear this, which is called a robe. And I also have a special thing called a stole that I wear that helps tell everyone that I have a special job here in the church. A lot of what we do in church is special. And I have something special to show you today. Can you see this? Now, does this look like anything that you've ever seen before? What do you think? I think it looks like a clock. Now, what do clocks normally do? Normally, clocks tell time, and they tell us what time of day it is. But this is a really special clock. It's a special church clock. And it doesn't just tell us what time of day it is, it tells us what time of year it is. In the church, we have colors that tell us what time of the year it is. Right now, we're in the green time, which is called ordinary time. Can you say that word, ordinary? Do you know what that means? Ordinary means normal, everyday, just normal, but it's kind of a fancy word for that. So we're in ordinary time right now, and so we're in the green time, and that means that I wear a green stole, and that helps you to know what time it is, too. Every week I'm going to show you this so that we know where we are in the church year. Now, the most important thing that we're going to do together is learn how much God loves you. We're going to sing a song together to help us remember how much God loves us. It's called Jesus Loves Me, and we're going to sing it now together. So if you know the words, you can sing along. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Now, to end our time together, we're going to do something called praying. Praying really just means talking to God. And sometimes when we're praying, it helps us to have a special way to put our hands or our bodies to remember that we're doing something special. So we can put our hands together like this as a special way to talk to God. When we pray, will you please repeat after me? Let's pray now. Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. I love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me today. Good morning. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And I'd like to welcome you to The Vine. I'm glad that you took the time to worship with us today. Today we're beginning a new sermon series for the fall based on the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is a list of holy virtues which the Apostle Paul describes in the fifth chapter of Galatians. We use it as a key verse for our church's slogan. Uh, you'll see it here on the, on the screen here for a minute. And I want you to take a notice because you'll see that our logo is the picture of a person in the shape of a tree. On the tree are leaves, and the tree is bearing red-colored fruit. You'll also see um, that there's a tagline that goes with it that says, Deep Roots, Bountiful Fruit, It Happens Here. 
Beneath that, we learn that the tagline, the slogan, the motto, whatever you want to call it, is this is a vision guided by John 15, 5 and Galatians 5, 22, 23. So now we've got to go look up those verses in the Bible. In John 15, 5, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says to them, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will bear much fruit. Oh, so we're supposed to remain in Jesus or stay connected with him so we can bear much fruit. Well, how interesting. What kind of fruit are we talking about? Apples, peaches, pumpkin pie? No, the Galatians passage tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those holy virtues that I mentioned. That's what we're supposed to produce. And so I got to thinking, if Jesus told us to bear much fruit, and Paul took the time to write about it, and our church decided to adopt these words for our logo, then we probably ought to take some time to address it in a sermon. So we're going to look at each one of these virtues throughout the fall season to get a better idea of what we're supposed to be doing on Christ's behalf. Today we'll start with the first virtue, love. Now we use this word love a lot in the church, but I think it's important to know specifically what we're talking about. You see, in English we only have one word for love, but the Apostle Paul was writing in ancient Greek and they had eight words for love each with a slightly different meaning. You're probably familiar with the three types that are used the most. For instance, there is eros. That's the Greek word for love that's most closely associated with romantic love. There's Cupid and arrows and the hearts and all the feels. and Well, that's not what we're talking about today. There's philia, or brotherly love, meaning a friendship between equals. It's where we get the name Philadelphia from. Again, also not what we're talking about today. But that takes us to agape. This is the word Paul uses today and is the name of one of our Sunday school classes here at Wrightsville. Agape is the highest form of love for it transcends and persists, excuse me, transcends and persists regardless of circumstances. It's not based on a transaction. It's not based on family ties. It has nothing to do with one's feelings. In the Christian world, it is used to describe God's unconditional love for humanity. But it's not used exclusively for God. Thomas Aquinas said that it can mean to will the good of another. So it's an action of goodness toward another person without regard to whether or not they actually deserve it. It can be used for friends, for family, even strangers. That's agape love. Like I said, the highest form of love. Well, in today's letter to the Romans, authentic love, or a true agape, is Paul's shorthand for a humanity that's restored to its original place before the fall, or our first act of disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Authentic love is expressed by those who've been transformed by the mind of God, saved by the sacrifice of Christ, and who feel the bonds of faith that bind all people together. Only Jesus' life, mission, death, and resurrection make any semblance of that possible. You think you can live an authentic human life that does not repay anyone evil for evil without Jesus in your life? Be awfully hard. You think you can, by yourself, live an authentic human life that chooses loving over winning? forgiving over vengeance, service over selfishness, and sacrifice over worldly success? You think you can resist a culture which tells you in every commercial and in every communication that the world should revolve around you? It'd be really hard to resist that without Jesus. You know, every morning I go to work and I check my email. It's one of the first things I do. And every morning I have dozens upon dozens of new messages. Of course, I don't actually. Most of it's what we call spam. Spam is that computer-generated, mass-produced, impersonal group of emails that are the perfect example of life in an inauthentic world. Spammers know your email address. Spammers may even know something about you. 
For instance, I tend to get a lot of stuff about politics from both sides of the aisle. I get a lot about sports. I get a lot about church audiovisual equipment. And somebody really wants me to go on a vacation to the Bahamas. But spam is without any personal connection. It's generated without any authenticity, without concern or interest or caring for the actual individual person. Meanwhile, authentic love or genuine agape is one of the most important defining characteristics of a Christian community. Our example is in Christ's gift of authentic love to the world. Let's hear Paul speak one more time. For this is what it means to be real. He says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what's right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everybody. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it's written, it's mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So in this world of raging inauthenticity, in a culture that can sometimes look like a toilet bowl of toxicity, here's what it means to live an authentic human life. Live like you're allergic to evil. And when you're around good actions, be like a cat on catnip. Put other people above yourself so long as they don't abuse you. Reverend, Reverend Leonard Sweet puts it like this. In a world of fashionistas, be a passionista for faith, hope, and love. Be someone who's constantly being asked why you have such high hopes and optimism. Pray without ceasing. Forgive without flinching. Be indiscriminate in your hospitality. Remember, you and I are called to live by a different standard. Jesus himself said, I picked you to live on God's terms and not on the world's terms. Well, as I was putting the sermon together, I started thinking, okay, now I've explained this particular fruit of the Spirit, this agape love that Paul is talking about. Now's the time in the sermon to show it through an example. And I suddenly realized that jo Jesus showed it by example all the time. For instance, there's the Good Samaritan, where the Samaritan goes to check on the person who's beaten and left to die on the side of the road. Samaritan didn't know or care whether the person deserved help. He didn't care if he was the same race or religion. He didn't ask who the victim voted for, what he'd done in his past, or what his plans were for the future. He just gave help without question. Then there's the forgiveness of the woman caught in adultery. In this case, Jesus actually acknowledged that the woman had done wrong. But he turned to her accusers and said, which one of you has never sinned? And then saved her from being stoned to death. The prodigal son takes it even further. In that story, the son leaves home and quickly squanders all his money in some shady living. But when he comes home, his father throws a party for him to celebrate the renewal of their broken relationship. Then there's the woman at the well who comes to the well in the heat of the day because she's shunned by her community, but finds that Jesus is already at the well offering her living water. Or the man named Legion who's been living in the cemetery possessed by demons. Or the woman who's been hemorrhaging blood for 12 years and interrupts Jesus while he's on his way to heal someone else. Or the man who's lowered through the roof of another man's house by his four friends in an attempt to help him walk again. Or the man who'd been paralyzed for 38 years that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. 
Nowhere does Jesus ask these people to say the sinner's prayer or promise to live by the Ten Commandments the rest of their lives or to repeat the Shema before they are healed. He just did it. Finally, Jesus tells us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And then on a cross, he does that very thing by calling out to God, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Here's the thing. With agape love, you don't actually have to like somebody in order to love them. It's not about your feelings. It's about their needs. Not about their wants, but their needs. Not about letting them walk all over you, but attending to their real needs. Bert Bacharach is a musician who died this past February. He composed some of the greatest love songs of the 20th century. Songs like, Raindrops keep falling on my head. Or, Just like me, they long to be close to you. And my all-time favorite, the moment I wake up, before I put on my makeup, I say a little prayer for you. Some of you know that song. But one of the biggest songs ever that he wrote wasn't about romantic love. Instead, it was about this agape love that Paul was talking about. And it went like this. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. As Christians, we should be imitating Jesus and putting that agape love, sweet love, out into the world wherever we go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, teach us how to love in its highest form. You have showed us how you love us, and you've given us certainly feelings toward other people, people that are close to us, or maybe bad feelings toward people as well. But in agape love, you teach us to love regardless of feelings and regardless of circumstance. Teach us to love like that, to love like Jesus did. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Jesus taught us the highest form of love, that agape love, by dying for us while we were yet sinners. That certainly proves God's love toward us, doesn't it? Now our job as Christians, as followers of Jesus, is to love like that, indiscriminately, whether a person seems to deserve it or not. Everybody needs to be loved. So let's go spread that love and be fruitful in God's name. Amen.